Hey guys, so today's movie I'm going to be discussing on the channel is the latest film from Maria Schrader called She Said, which is an adaptation by Rebecca Lenkiewicz of the book by journalists Jody Cantor and Megan Toohey, who are the two New York Times reporters who played a pivotal role in the uncovering of Harvey Weinstein and the decades-long history of his sexual misconduct in the entertainment industry. Their expose article in the New York Times helped trigger the hashtag MeToo movement. So this was only back in what, 2017? So it does feel relatively fresh. The film stars Carrie Mulligan and Zoe Kazan as Tui and Cantor, and the story follows them through the months of 2017 as they interviewed a number of witnesses and victims of Harvey's wrongdoings, many of whom were silenced through fear and intimidation tactics, or sometimes even legally by Weinstein and his team who bought their silence in exchange for non-disclosure agreements and any potentially incriminating materials. The fact that Weinstein could cultivate a culture of silence throughout the entire entertainment industry for multiple decades just illustrates how powerful he actually was. And while he might be the sole perpetrator of these crimes, what's even more shocking is how the system that was in place enabled him to be so abusive for so many years. She said is in a similar vein to Tom McCarthy's Spotlight in that it's a honest look at the world of investigative journalism and it's executed in a way that feels very realistic. It's not flashy or glamorous. It's it's mostly just a lot of phone calls and meetings. And I gotta say, I really respect that approach. Often when you get these movies about real life cases, there's a tendency to sensationalize, or you've got a hyperbolic script, which you know, amplifies the drama. It just makes it a bit more juicy, a bit more dramatic, more of a palatable watch for an audience. Heck, even more marketable, but Schrader has no interest in sensationalizing the abuse that occurred in order to get bums in seats. Instead, she presents it as very matter of fact. This is what they did, they did their jobs. And given that this is a story about a sex scandal, Schrader keeps the focus of the story on the journalism and not the sexual exploitation. We don't actually see the crimes as they happen. In fact, there's very little of Harvey Weinstein in this film other than a couple of phone calls where you hear his voice, or some stock footage, or there's one occasion where they use a body double but only shoot him from the back. But that's precisely the point, because Schrader doesn't want to give Weinstein any more focus than he needs, when really the focus of the story is on the brave women who investigated him, and the even braver women who came forward and spoke their truth. But yeah, I appreciate that it wasn't graphic. Anything that alludes to abuse is shot in like empty, lavish hotel suites or empty hotel corridors, sometimes punctuated by some audio of Weinstein pressuring women or speaking to them in a derogatory manner. The performances are solid. Mulligan and Kazan make a dynamic leading pair, and yes, they are co-leads in this film. They get about the same amount of screen time, and they lead this investigation together. However, I get why they submitted Kerry Mulligan for supporting actress, but more on that later. What I liked about Mulligan and Kazan's performances is how down-to-earth they felt. They're both playing everyday working mums, and motherhood is something that is very much highlighted about who they are as people. I would say that Mulligan gets more emotionally meatier material to work with, like she has a subplot involving postpartum depression, which annoyingly does get forgotten about, but she also has a heated confrontation with this casual misogynist in a bar. Kazan does get one very cathartic moment towards the end of the film where she gets a witness to come forward publicly, which brings her to tears. Like, you can really feel the weight being lifted off her shoulders in this moment. Like I said, Mulligan and Kazan are really good in this, but a week has passed since I saw She Said, and they aren't the two performances which have stayed with me the longest. That honor goes to Samantha Morton, who plays a former employee of Miramax called Zelda Perkins, and Jennifer Eel, who played Laura Madden, who was one of the victims of Harvey Weinstein. Samantha Morton in 2022, I mean, talk about a one-scene wonder. Both She Said and The Whale, she stops by for one scene, 
does her thing, leaves an impact, and gets out. She gets the job done. And Jennifer Eel actually has a little bit more to work with, cause she has an arc. Her character actually opens and closes the film and really does go on an emotional journey. She has to open up old wounds and revisit trauma from the past, as well as make a decision which Little did she know would have a ripple effect throughout the entire world. Incredible work from Eel and Morton. They are the real supporting standouts of this film, which is why I'm a little irked that Universal have submitted Kerry Mulligan for supporting actress, pretty much eradicating any chance of Eel or Morton getting a nomination of their own. It's blatant category fraud to have a co-lead in this category. I get why Universal did it, because a performance with more screen time is more likely to stand out and be remembered and therefore nominated. And if Universal wants, she said, to get a Best Picture nomination, then they ideally need at least one acting nomination to go along with it. And with Best Actress being absolutely stacked this year, they decided to hedge their bets and put Kerry Mulligan in supporting instead because she'll have a better chance there. And she's already got some good favor with the Academy for her recent nomination for Promising Young Woman a few years prior. It's very sneaky tactics, but what bothers me the most about it is that the two true standout supporting performances of She Said are probably gonna go by unacknowledged. This is where Academy politics and strategy really pisses me off. And I'm not saying Kerry Mulligan isn't worthy of a nomination. All I'm saying is put her in the right category and have faith in the Academy voters to acknowledge Morton or Eel and let them get their first ever nomination where it's actually justified because it's the right category. I mean, an acting nom is still an acting nom even if it's not for one of your leads. But yeah, rant over. As for its other Oscars chances, sorry, but I don't think Zoe Kazan will get into Best Actress. Like, I, I think she's worthy of a nomination, but the competition is just too competitive this year. Like, I just, I just don't think she has enough emotional, juicy moments to stand out when you compare it to Kate Blanchett or Michelle Yeoh or Daniel Deadweiler. I'm not saying it's impossible for her to get in, but I do think it's unlikely. I'm currently manifesting an Oscar nomination for either Samantha Morton or Jennifer Eel for supporting actress, but honestly, I don't think it's gonna happen. Best Adapted Screenplay does seem very likely for Rebecca Lenkiewicz. I don't see a director nomination for Maria Schrader, sorry. I can't see it getting into editing or cinematography. It's just not very memorable in those aspects. As for best picture, in my last Oscar predictions video, I had it at like number nine or 10 in those predictions. She said could get in. It is a sturdily made and timely movie with great writing and good performances. And the Academy might want to acknowledge it for its thematic content and the statement it makes by giving it a Best Picture nomination. Remember when they gave Christopher Plummer a nomination for All the Money in the World for the role which he replaced Kevin Spacey after the allegations about his sexual misconduct came out? So yes, I can still see it getting into Best Picture, but I can see it also not getting into Best Picture, so I've still got it like at my 10th position in my predictions. Like it's a good movie, but it's not really a great one, so I can see it being bumped out for something else. What do you guys think? What Oscar nominations is she said going to get? Whatever you think, put it in the comment section below. So let's ask them three questions. Firstly, would I watch this again? Yeah, I would. It's well made, gripping, and has some great performances in it, so yeah, I'd give it another go. Question two, do I recommend it for you guys? If you like movies like Spotlight, or The President's Men, or The Post, you know, movies about investigative journalism, then I think you're going to like She Said. So yeah, that's who I recommend this movie for. And third question, what score to give it out of 10? I had a pretty good time watching She Said. I was moved by it, and I felt myself come up for air on more than one occasion. Like, it's a well-made movie, which just doesn't quite reach greatness. So I'm gonna give She Said a score of seven out of 10. But as always, guys, it's just one bloke's opinion. I do want to hear from you. Have you seen She Said? If you have, what do you make of it? If, whatever you have to say, let your voice be heard in that comment section down below. If you have enjoyed this video, help me out by hitting that little thumbs up button. If you want more movie, TV, and Oscars-related content, don't forget to click subscribe, and if you want to follow me on any of my socials, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, TikTok, it's all in that video description down below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. For more things related to movies, TV, the Oscars, and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Kierfield, and I'll see you next time.